Roland Burke reporting from southern Pakistan. Now, earlier we were talking about protests in New York over the Islamic Centre row. Later today, we're expecting a protest in Chicago, albeit a smaller one. Supporters of Marshall Fields, which has been one of the oldest department stores in the city until a few years ago, uh, when it was taken over by the chain Macy's. And the world today's Jonathan Fenton Fisher has been speaking to shoppers who say it's never been the same since and they want Marshall Fields back. Chicago, Chicago, that title in town. America's second city prides itself on its history, its rich architecture and its industrial heritage, linked to its geographic location in the heart of the Midwest. But in 2006, an important part of that history and heritage disappeared. Stores across America taken over by the Macy's chain were rebranded overnight and renamed as Macy's. But it was in Chicago that the pain was felt the most, Jim Mackay is an architecture consultant and former professor at the University of Illinois. Up until 2006, the store here at, uh, on State Street was an international destination known as Marshall Fields, and it had been here since the uh, 1860s, and it was one of the most popular destinations. At that point, the store adopted the, the name Macy's of its new parent company, and then uh, all stores across the country that were owned by Macy's became Macy's. Marshall Fields was a name that was synonymous with Chicago, the way they ran the store is unique to Chicago, and uh, Chicago was basically outraged by this. It was, uh, some people call it corporate imperialism as a form of removing part of Chicago's culture. Since so uh, the clock so that are associated with the building, the architecture, are just considered quintessentially Chicago. It prompted Jim to start a protest group, Field Fan Chicago. They've gathered outside Macy's every year since the takeover in the hope that one day the company will bring back the brand and rename the store Marshall Fields. As he handed out publicity leaflets outside the store, he told me why it meant so much to him. My personal field story is that in 1985, I was fresh out of college. I have a slightly odd shirt length that I take. Not that I really cared that much uh, yes. when I was coming out of high school, or out of college. Long, long, long arms, we should right, say. Yes. Right, right. The clerks here did pay attention, and uh, they apologized for not having a shirt that fit me perfectly. And uh, they sent my, me and the shirt up for complimentary tailoring wow. to make sure I had a shirt that fit just right for my interviews. And so that was really a, an amazing thing. Earlier this year, Jim carried out a survey of over 500 shoppers in Chicago. The result? Over 80% still want Marshall Fields to come back. It's a figure that seemed pretty accurate to me when I conducted my own unscientific survey outside the store. I miss it a lot. I don't think it's the same. Macy's is more concerned about volume as opposed to quality, you know. I remember the ice cream shop. It was just something about how Marshall Fields used to be and how beautiful it was without all that red Macy's signage and all that stuff. Macy's you can get anywhere in America and this is special and I just think it's a shame. You know, Macy's is okay, don't get me wrong, you know, but the mystique of it was Chicago's Marshall Fields, Macy's is New York. And people like them. they want quality. Macy's told me they are proud of the part they have played in keeping and creating jobs at the store and in helping the local community. In fact, they say they've reversed a long string of sales losses experienced by Marshall Fields. On State Street, that great street, I just want to say. State Street today is bustling, still a main thoroughfare in Chicago's business district, but it isn't quite the great street that Frank Sinatra sung about. The department stores that helped make its name are largely gone, unable to compete with the discount retailers, the out-of-town malls, and the internet. But Jim Mackay is still hopeful for a change that could regenerate the area. You know, when we have so many negative things in our economy and in the world right now, having a big comeback list would really just be an incredible, energizing force in the city. Chicago, that's my hometown.
Jonathan Fenton Fisher with that report from Chicago. A little bit of help from old Blue Eyes as well. Um, Clemency, what do you think about this story? Can you understand the sentimental feeling towards Marshall Field? I can certainly understand the sentimental feeling. What I find quite extraordinary is the fact that um, the shop, Marshall Field, hadn't actually been the Fields family for 100 years and it had actually been taken over first by British American Tobacco in 1982 and then later by the Target Corporation, which I thought was even less savoury than Macy's as a parent company and then finally bought by federated department stores. So I think a lot of this sentiment is, you know, oh, it was interesting question, you know, what's in a name, what's in a logo? Certainly a lot of the people that Jonathan was interviewing there felt very strongly that because it no longer looked like Marshall Fields and it looked like a Macy's, that that was part of it. So certainly interesting questions about what really makes the heart and soul of a local, you know, what makes it feel local when in fact it's, as I say, has not been owned by the family for so long. Um, but I can certainly understand the sentiment I feel, you know, in Britain and in America, it's very difficult now to walk down a high street without thinking that everything's been homogenised, that there is mm. certainly a sense of, you know, whether it's corporate imperialism, that's obviously a very strong way of putting it but it's hard not to think that when you see the same logos in the same stores has everywhere. That, has that happened in Paris yet Christopher Dickey? The, you the can kind see of homogenisation of the high street? Not not as much as in, in Britain perhaps, certainly not as much as in America but you do see it happening. You Around the edges of the major cities you have uh, shopping malls growing up, uh, big discount stores, uh, you don't have Walmart, Mart, but you'd have Carrefour, which is a very similar. Uh, all of that's going on at the same time. A lot of the mom and pop shops, for instance, wine shops, uh, have been taken over by chains like Nicholas. Do they have um, Starbucks yet in Paris? I used they to do. live in Paris all very over. briefly, and yeah, I think all over very popular. When Starbucks I was there, is very it wasn't there, here. and there was a sense of like, let's stave off the Starbucks. Well, and before that, it was invasion. McDonald's. Before yeah. that, it was the McDonald's. What about the view of the kind of urban landmark, though? Is it more about the building itself rather than what's in it? Well, I think it's about memories. Uh, it's about identity, as some of the people in the report were saying. You know, uh, in America especially, there is this sense that no place has an individual identity anymore. Every community is fighting to keep some sense of itself as, in fact, the malls move in, the Walmarts move in, and the downtowns die. Uh, or maybe they get, they're either boarded up or called historic districts. Interestingly, I feel like Macy's in New York City kind of has something of the, the of the feeling that, that lots of the people there were talking about Marshall Field well, in terms of a historic building, in terms of something with really totemic significance within the city. As I said, I, I would have found it much more offensive that the department store was owned by Target than by Macy's. It's very interesting well, how but Target those... kept the name. Target kept the name yeah. Marshall Field. And the other, of course, in New York, we had Macy's and Gimbel's. Mm. We don't have Gimbel's anymore. Yeah. And you're right about Macy's, but says somebody said in the report, Macy's is, in, is New York, as yeah. far as people are concerned. Marshall Fields was, uh, was Chicago. If you're just joining us, you're tuned to the BBC World Service. This is The World Today.